Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. Today is Winter is Coming Wednesday, the March episode. I'm going to continue with On the Horizon. Last week's video, I shared some masculine options for my stepfather, in, and they were geometric shape-oriented projects. This week, I am going to continue on. I had actually already made the the core of these as another possibility for some masculine cards, and I thought after I chose what I was going to send to him that I would convert these to Christmas, and I will get your input and see what you guys think. They're still on the side of clean and simple with white as the base. So here is the stamp set. I am mainly using the dies. I also want to share a, this is a product that I had long ago. And then when we started traveling, I did not bring it with me. It is a magnet bowl and it comes from Harbor Freight. So now all I have to do is toss my dies in the bowl so that they're safe. It's mainly for those really small dies that lurk around my desk and I worry that I may lose them if I don't keep better track of them. So that is just a tip. I think it was around $5. I would suppose you could even maybe make your own if you found some sort of a metal cup and then added a magnet on the bottom yourself. So I am using these four dies. And the first thing I want to do is demo. I am also using the paper that I had last week, the New Horizons DSP. And the first thing I want to do is demo what I have found to be the absolute cleanest way to use the gilded flakes. So I have this container. By now that I've done a few, it's mostly empty, but I also want to show you that you can make wonderful gilded items from just the very scraps. I, I live in a trailer, as you all know, and I have to be very, very clean. There's no glitter, no messy paints, nothing messy. Um, and that's not my husband saying it, it's me, because I do not want to be responsible for uh, any permanent damage or messiness in the trailer. So what I've got here, I'm going to do the fence. What I did is I added transfer uh, a sheet of adhesive sheet, and then I die cut it, so it is super sticky. And then I have my very careful large lidded container. Uh, there is the AC running right now. There's even a fan running behind me on low. Um, it is currently, we're in Florida. We're actually over at Fort Myer now for two weeks. We have not been on the Gulf Coast. You can actually see the flakes kind of moving about. I have a tweezer handy. Oh, we had an escape, escapee. And so what I have found works the best because I've done all the other shapes and I saved this last one to film with you guys watching is you can just take whatever you've got that's stickied, uh, good, you can use the adhesive sheets, you can use tear and tape, you can use adhesive, just the um, seal adhesive, which I have um, used seal on on trim, like a baker's twine trim. I find that uh, it doesn't really work for me to use brushes or any other tools. I find that I can control this gilding better with my fingers. I did go to a Stampin' Up! event last July and we had projects using this gilding flake material and everybody used a different brush from a soft 
the, uh, what is it called? The blending brushes were used. And I've tried a toothbrush. And I just find, so now I've got, oh, oh that's a nice big piece. I'm going to ensure that I have covered every bit of this fence by feeling if there's any sticky areas. Any sticky areas, I'm going to take my tweezer and apply more of the gilding. I see an area right here. It's feeling pretty well coated, and I even think there's probably enough scrap leftovers, and it doesn't really look different to me whether you use these bigger pieces or you use the teeny tiny scraps because they all layer. They're such a fine, uh, just a, so thin and delicate that they end up all mushing together and you can't really tell the difference. So that's what we look like, and now I'm going to take my fingers and I am going to run along the edges of the fence, pulling away extra material. It will not peel off beyond the sticky because this is really sticky material. All right, so after I've peeled off the easy parts and then I'm kind of curling them down, I can look at the back and see how much is still falling over and you can take your tweezers in between the slats and kind of peel back. I'm, I'm being very careful to do this over the top of the bin because I want the pieces to stay in this bin so I can put the lid on it when I am done. I may speed this up after I demonstrate the basics of cleaning off the edges of the material. And now we're starting to look like a fence. I will tell you when you add the adhesive sheet to your paper, this is by the way the basic white, it's around 65 pounds, you do not want to go any thicker. I have with the detailed um, cuts, I had a really hard time, I had extra shim, I did two extra shims to make my, my sandwich really, really fat and it was hard to push, push through but that's the only way I could get the die cutter to cut all the way through the paper plus the adhesive covering. So that's a tip for how to make sure you get a good cut. And I went four or five times back and forth and back and forth. You can back and forth, you can rotate. If you still have a problem, another secret is to actually, if there's one area that's being really stubborn and won't cut through, all right, I am happy with this fence, so I'm going to pause now and just get get my container closed. There may be enough in here for yet one more covering. Anyhow, so you have one area of your die that is being stubborn and won't cut through. You can actually layer washi tape, as many layers as you need, and you can just pull it, put it on the back behind the area that is not cutting all the way through. So I have resorted to that, though I have not had to do that for a very long time. I find that these Stampin' Up! dies are a really good quality die, so I haven't really had that issue. Okay, I think I have corralled all of the gilding flakes safely. I'm going to put the rest here. All right. So now we have our fence. This is about what it looks like. 
And now I'm going to set that aside and demonstrate the initial idea. So I had this happy birthday and I created squares. This one is all finished. It's all popped up with dimensionals. And that was one of the alternative ideas to the other geometric shapes. But I liked the, ge the geometric shape options better. And I thought, I am going to see if I can take these little scenes, cut in squares, matted, and just do a really simple change to make them be Christmas. So the first thing that I did on this particular one, I have this lovely uh, reeds or grasses gilded. It's popped up with mini dimensionals and I'm going to add this just right there to this green. I think that the shape of the green looking bushy uh, with this kind of artistic rendering of even more bushy reeds adds a nice, you could keep it a birthday with this die cut popped up on top or I went ahead and took the back and this is a gold heat embossed powder and here was my Christmas idea so let me know I have actually some more of these to share with you um, with a couple of different options and as always I will take photography at, to have a showcase at the end of all of the different variations and then I will figure out what I'm gonna do for the final version of these cards so here's one option and then I did already prepare some envelopes. I used the bows from Evening, is it Evening Evergreen? I have it sitting right here. Oh, sorry, Evergreen Elegance. So Evergreen Elegance then I brought into play because I was looking at the bows for the envelope and the inside of the card. And then I also created from the Merry Christmas, I created a heat embossed gold piece as a separate layer. And you could actually add this as well as an alternative. So I will probably be going ahead and converting these so there is another option for a Merry Christmas. And then again, the inside will have this on it as well. Not all of them have to be popped up. I did this one. This particular one had this very strange white dropped out where they just didn't when they the, whoever the artist was that created these papers left some white space and so this is actually the one that I wanted the fence for so this one I've got a little pop-up piece here I haven't even looked at this so you're looking at this for the first time with me and if I want to pop up bottom. This would also be a nice Christmas card. This is not with black. I actually did a mat on this one with Knight of Navy. So that's another option. And again, I just added with white gel pen some hints of windows, walls, and a door behind the stamped. I used the reed and the um, grasses stamp so this is another option so let me go ahead and show you the third one this one I used the three houses you'll see there's a little piece of the gold that isn't folded over I may or may not care whether I have that folded over or not and then the last one ended up being a little bit different. So I have like a set of four. I liked this purple 
and I added the mountain range, but so far I have decided not to trim the edges off. I might just leave it just like that and offset it in some way. I might even say that this centered might not work. I might actually offset it either to the right or to the left. So this one will give me um, a fun challenge of figuring out how best to present this and it, it actually has uh, no dimensionals yet. I have adhered the mountain range with, uh, I used glue, uh, the mono glue, liquid adhesive glue. The houses are popped up with mini dimensionals. The fence is not attached at all, but I don't think I'm going to pop it up. I believe I will just attach it with the glue. And the grasses already have dimensionals on them. So now I want, I created another background. All I did was take a, uh, the 65 pound and I let it be for a card. It's a little bit warped, but I think once I add You could also do the heavy, um, thick if you want, but I wanted to get a lot of the fine detail. So here is this one with, I also did a gold embossed white. So that one I like really well. And I hope Say that's what that one looks like. Let's see what these all look like. I definitely believe that the boughs give it that Christmassy look. There's also the the snowflakes as an option, but I didn't see a lot of win really true winter looking scenes, so I am probably going to go ahead and stick with the boughs or plain white, and I might do a mix of them. For embellishments, you could use any gold dots. Uh, there's the gilded gems that are gold. And this sums up what I have for you today. I hope this gets you in the spirit of looking at the New Horizons DSP, thinking of ways to maybe Christmas it up, and this is if you want to get started early. Uh, I am doing these monthly through June, and then we'll start weekly in July after we have the holiday mini catalog released so that I can go through all of the newer products. We do also have a catalog going live in May. I will probably have some pre-order products in April. So April's edition will maybe get to share with you the new annual catalog holiday items. I would love to know your thoughts on whether these are Christmassy enough the way I've done them and whether you feel the version with the smooth background for clean and simple or the bows. If both of these work or if one works better than the other, I would love to know what you think. I'm going to go ahead and put down all four of the scenes for you. Go ahead and leave your comments, questions, or concerns on this video or over on my blog. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.